HDR composite imaging. What is it? How does it work? And why do we need it when processing some of our images? All this and more right after my brand new intro. Here we go. Hello everyone, my name is Shoin Kashi and you're watching Astro Island. Today we're going to be talking about HDR composite images. So what exactly is it? Now before we begin, just about midnight or thereafter where I live, Orion, one of the most famous objects in the sky for us beginners, begin to rise. And as some of us may know, the core of Orion is extremely bright. So what we want to do is capture Orion or any similar object with a bright core at several different exposure lengths or a stack of several different exposure lengths. So for example, we may want to capture Orion at a few stacks at 180 seconds and then another stack at 60 seconds and maybe another stack at 30 seconds. And you can choose to go even more um, several exposure lengths. Now that you've gotten just a very brief overview of exactly what an HDR composite image is, let's head straight to the computer, shall we? And what I will do, I'm going to be using some images that I've captured of said Orion at various exposure lengths. In my instance, I've used 180 seconds, 60 seconds, and 30 seconds. So let's get straight to it. We are here now on the computer and we as you can see we have orion lined up at various exposure lengths so i believe it was on night one i would have captured it at 180 seconds on night two i would have captured it at 60 seconds and on night three captured it at 30 seconds and of course straight off the bat by looking at the various exposure lengths we can see that the core of orion is really bright at 180 seconds not so bright at 60 seconds and even less bright at 30 seconds and looking at it now I, I think I could have gone down even less exposure lengths maybe even 5 or 10 seconds but that's okay uh, we'll look at what we have right now one of the very first things that I like to do after an image has been stacked and it's it, um, open inside of PixInsight is of course to have it renamed um, because of course you know you want to have it for easy identification you don't want to have this very long name coming across on your pics inside so i'm going to just rename them quickly uh this one is 180 seconds i'm just going to name it orion 180 seconds take all of this off i'm going to rename this one orion 60 seconds Yeah, maybe I can take the, uh, I'm going to take this off as well. And give it 60 seconds. And the last one, I'm going to just rename it. Just double click right here and rename it as Orion 30 seconds. All right, let me just bring a little formality to each of them. 180 seconds. All right, there we go. So now it's much easier to identify Orion 180, Orion 60, and Orion 30. And straight off the bat, if you look at it, the orientations are different because these would have been captured at different nights. So if you try to line them up, let's, let me just maximize it so you can see. If you try to line them up, obviously the stars are not going to match up. Likewise, if you try to place it on this one that seems to have the same orientation, they're not going to line up with each other. There's still that variance between, between each of them. So the first thing that needs to happen is we need to do a star alignment. And we do that by going to process, all process and star alignment. And we clear off everything here. By clicking on this button here, it's going to clear off any other um, task that you would have had um, done before. 
So because I'm working with inside of PixInsight and I'm not pulling the information off of a file, I can just leave it where it says view, click on the arrow and choose the one with the longest exposure first as a reference frame. So we click OK, you click on add views and then now we can add the 60 seconds and the 30 seconds. And that's basically it. We have the reference at 180 seconds and it's usually the longest exposure that goes here. We have 30 seconds and the 60 second exposures. Um, of course, if you want it output in a particular directory, you can select that as well. And we just basically click um, apply global. So this is going to run for a few seconds. And then it's going to start creating those images. Okay, we can close this off now. So now we have the aligned 30 seconds and 60 seconds that now matches up with this one. So let's um, stretch it. Right, so now they're perfectly aligned with each other. And of course, it, it will be cropped because, of course, they were taken at different nights, uh, different orientations. So there's going to be a little cropping happening there. The next thing that you want to do is to begin saving your images, which I have already done. I've named the registered images as Orion 60 seconds registered, which basically means it has been star aligned, as well as this image, which is the Orion 30 seconds registered, which is the second star line. And we have the reference frame, which was originally renamed as Orion 180 seconds. So these have already been saved, so we can close them off. And what we want to do now is to create that HDR composition image or that HDR composite image, as some people may say. So we go to process, all process and HDR composition. So all we need to do, we add all the files. Let's go to desktop. We have everything stored. Run HDR. Have it as star line. And we just basically select all three. Click open. Now, usually what I like to do is to have a little bit more smoothness in when creating the mask, which will give a nice smoother edge to the image. Right, so usually 20 is pretty good for me and the mass growth may be about uh, two or three um, yeah maybe two all right and let's just bring this up a little bit um, we don't need to select anything here nothing here we leave everything else at default um, you can adjust you know based on your image you can adjust it accordingly whether whatever you feel more comfortable with and uh, we just basically click on apply global once more Once the HDR composition program has been completed, you can now close this off because it creates this new image here that is just labeled as HDR. So you can close this off. And now if we click on the stretch button or the auto stretch button, there we have it. We have our blended or HDR composite image. So now inside of this image, it's blended or it is a composite of the 30 seconds and the 60 seconds all blended together with the 180 seconds to create this final image. And just to give you a preview as to what you can see, uh, we're now going to remove all of this green, which is basically um, from the light pollution and the filter blocking out some of that uh, light pollution. It gives that green cast. So we go to process. Well, actually, no, we go to script. I believe it's utilities or toolbox. Ah, there we go. So it's script, toolbox, and auto linear fit. Um, I usually just like to select the lowest mean and we click on the check mark. So the auto linear fit has been run, and basically, what auto linear fit does, it basically aligns the R, G, and B channels together 
so they are more or less equally aligned in terms of the uh the colors and there we have it let me do um, a rotate so we go to dynamic crop uh, just to make sure i'm clear everything and if we click on this little square in the corner right here or you can even type it in you can rotate your image however you want it now of course there's no up or down or sideways in space so but most people always like to have any image and a particular orientation that they're accustomed to so i'm just going to rotate it at 180 degrees and we click on this check mark so check mark to confirm this is how we want it and now orion has been rotated to 180 degrees to give it a more um, apparent or more common look looks pretty beautiful don't you think so there you have it folks we have taken three images or three stacks of images at different exposure lengths and we've now merged it or created an hdr composite image into three images now blended into one now stay tuned for my final part of this uh, basic beginners tutorial where we now begin to process that image and bring down the brightness of that core and get to really bring on the colors and the beauty that orion has to offer from that image that i've captured a while back so again thanks very much for watching as always don't forget to like the video and always remember to subscribe to the channel so we can all learn and grow together in this astro photography and astronomy community as always i close close off by saying it's not the size of a telescope that counts it's how you use it thanks again everyone bye bye take care for now